The Bamboo Lab H2C has officially launched, and is it a fail or is it exactly what we expected? Let's go ahead and talk about it. So before we go ahead and get into the video, guys, if you're new around here, my name is Mike and I try to keep everyone up to date with the latest in 3D printing. And to do that, I do have a weekly 3D printing news that launches every single Friday at 6 a.m. Arizona time. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But without further ado, let's talk H2C. So we can't talk H2C without talking about the price. Now, it has not officially launched in the United States. They did confirm that this is due to the FCC restrictions and their new approval process. So keep that in mind, that's probably why the P2S is also delayed. But again, it's nice to see that Bamboo Lab actually confirmed that this is the reason for the delay. Now they did say it could come in early December. However, that's the earliest time frame it could be. Now I'm gonna say that we get it before Christmas, but who knows, hopefully it's sooner rather than later for both the P2S and the H2C. So for now, I'm gonna be using the euros right here. We have $2,249. Now I did see on a few YouTube videos, they did say that it was $2,400 anticipated USD price. So with this, you get the H2C, it's like a H2C combo, right? It's just coming with the AMS system, which you need that anyway to take advantage of the Vortex system. However, if you want to take full advantage of the Vortex system, you actually need to buy the ultimate set, which comes out to 2,700 euros or if the United States, I'm gonna guess this is around $3,000. Now it might be slightly less. They haven't actually confirmed any sort of pricing. When it comes to the US, this has all been based on like YouTube videos and I didn't see anybody specifically talk about this one. I did see like a laser version. One of them said that it was gonna be $3,000. But again, like we're not really sure. So if you want the laser, you want the ultimate set, you want the 40 watt laser ultimate set, you're gonna be paying over 4,000, probably close to 5,000 USD dollars. Now that is, you know, not for the faint of heart and that's not for everyone. Most people are probably not going to be doing that. So you're probably gonna be looking at the standard plus the ultimate set. So realistically, you're probably looking around 3,000 USD dollars when it comes to this. So your wallet's going to cry out and especially around the holidays, like that's an expensive Christmas gift. If you're buying this for your significant other, you must really love them. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into the specs and all that of the H2C. Now, if you guys wanna see more videos that are more hands-on when it comes to the H2C, check out CNC Kitchen and Made With Layers. I really liked their videos when it came to the H2C and I thought they were pretty objective with their review and what their thoughts were on the 3D printer. So check them out, but we're gonna go ahead and get into it. It does have a 330 by 320 by 325 build volume. We already had that confirmed by the teaser video that you had. Um, pretty much all of this was to be expected when it came to the release of the H2C. So one of the more interesting things I thought was this Raptor print. You actually, it showcases what the print time differences are when it comes to the H2C. Now keep in mind, these are all promos. Is this actually like realistic? I mean, they usually are pretty accurate. So for example, they did already say in one of their videos, it was eight seconds induction heating for their nozzles. That was actually confirmed in one of those videos I stated. But again, like, yeah, take it with a grain of salt because these are promo, you know, mumbo jumbo. But you have the H2C at 100%. The H2D then takes a 12% decrease in print time. And the H2C is a 40%, 42% decrease in print time. And if you look at the purge volume, like stuff, 532 grams for the H2C, that's pretty much just the purge tower and the slight purges that it has to do to get the unusable filament out of the nozzles because with the nozzle changing system, you still have to purge a little bit. But if you're looking at, you have 3,032 grams for the H2D and 3,917 grams for the H2S. So that's a huge, that's, that's a huge decrease. So if you were to print like three or four of these Raptors, that's already a, a roll of filament. Like that, that's, that's a lot of savings when it comes to the H2C. And that's really the main thing that they're focused on here. Now, Bamboo Lab isn't necessarily focused on being faster than their competition. They're really just focused on, hey, you hit print, it prints it, it's beautiful, right? It's the Bamboo Lab way. They just don't want to, they're not, they're, their focus is not being faster than that of a tool changer. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But in comparison to the H2S to the H2C is a 42% decrease as far as print speeds, like swapping and all of that. And you know what? It also saves you quite a bit of filament. So moving on, they do have a few of these comparisons on their website. If you wanna check them all out, you can, but I'm not gonna talk about the same thing over and over and over. Of course, we've already seen the promo video when it comes to the Vortex system and how it works. 
Again, just more, it's just all about eliminating waste. There's not too much about speed on here. It's all about eliminating waste. One of the cool things I actually saw is that per nozzle, you can put like what material you're actually using it for. So that way you're not using those nozzles for an additional material. I guess there's some materials that only like that certain type of material in the nozzle, you can help prevent clogs, things of that nature. So that may be a good benefit to have because these nozzles do have serial numbers on them. The concern I can see with that is if they lock you in because they are proprietary and they are costing about $40 a piece. That is quite expensive when it comes to a nozzle and something to be on the lookout for. But I mean, I usually buy all my nozzles anyway from Bamboo Lab. Maybe that's the thing. People are like, Apple, you're closed in their ecosystem, blah, blah, blah. It has yet to be known if there's gonna be any sort of third-party support. They did confirm in one of the videos, I believe it was made with layers, that they are not currently, they don't currently have third-party support due to concerns with thermal runaway. But yeah, can't say I didn't tell you so if something happens with that. So one of the things that they're actually touting as well is the smaller form factor. It's all enclosed in the H2C. There's no PTFE tubes popping out. Of course, you have the AMS systems, but again, like on the Snapmaker, you have the rolls on the outside, same thing with the Prusa XL, they're all exposed. This, of course, focuses on the use of the AMS systems to retract, you know, put in the filament, all of that. So, yeah, it's all enclosed. I think the PTFE tube sticking out of all the nozzles and tool heads is really ugly, to say the least. I get it, it's for use, it's for, you know, use, or it's not for aesthetic, it's for function, but again, like, it is a benefit of the H2C system. Eight second induction heating, we saw all of that. It does have the active chamber heating, which is a plus over the Snapmaker U1, for example. I, I mean, you're paying a lot more. Again, you should have these extra features. Um, moving on, like, you know, it's typical stuff. All the stuff that we typically have expected from Bamboo Lab, it's present on the H2C. Now, one thing I want to note when it comes to like just talking about the H2C versus that of like tool heads. Now in the review videos, they've already shown that the Snapmaker U1, for example, for four colors is faster than four colors in the Vortex system. But again, Bamboo Lab's primary objective with the H2C wasn't necessarily to be the fastest. They put a lot of effort into their UI, into their software. They want the ease of use to be extremely easy. They want to eliminate waste and they are doing that with the H2C. They're largely eliminating a lot of the waste, maybe not as much as a tool changer, but they're either relatively close or they're right on par. So yeah, I mean, their primary, again, their primary function of this system was not to be faster. I think the next step now for Bamboo Lab is gonna be, hey, can you make this faster? If they do get to the point where they can make it faster, okay, now we have uh, you know, more competition, of course, but there's an option here where if you are not someone who's focused on speed, but you want Bamboo Labs quality, this is, this is exactly what you're asking for. This is the H2C. If you want something that has speed and eliminates waste, you want a tool changer. You want the Snapmaker you want, you want the Prusa XL, but the Prusa XL, look how expensive that is as well. And you're not getting still all the features that the H2C has. Yes, you're eliminating waste, but you're not necessarily getting the active chamber heating, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people have been making huge deals right now about the heated beds. I personally don't have any issues like with my heated beds, but you may have that with different um, materials that you print or whatever it may be. So there's pros and cons of every single 3D printer. So you have to weigh what is extremely important to you. If you're only printing PLA, the H2C has everything that you could possibly need, but so does the Snapmaker, unless you want to print with seven colors or even five colors, then you're already lended by the Snapmaker you want. So there's a lot to consider. Again, I can't make the personal choice for every single person. Now, am I necessarily like super hyped for the H2C? No, I can do all the same prints on my H2S. They might be slower and they might have more waste, but I can do them. So it's not like they're groundbreaking, oh, you can 3D print and do these other new things. No, not necessarily. There's just sacrifices when it comes to the price and things like that. So again, at $850 right now, you can pre-order the Snapmaker for if you're only doing four colors and smaller objects, because the build plate size is bigger on the H2C, it may be better for you. If you don't need the heated chamber, you don't want to stay in the Bamboo Lab ecosystem, 
Like the software is a huge thing. So we have yet to also see Snapmaker deliver something on a huge like, like there's so many people that ordered the Snapmaker U1 and we have yet to see if Snapmaker delivers to all those people. I don't care about all these people who are saying they already got production ones. I wanna see actual people who ordered the Snapmaker that are not the YouTubers get their stuff. Like Snapmaker can say this is a production unit and ship it to you, but like, let's be real. They picked it out and they shipped it to these people with thousands of subscribers and stuff, tens of thousands of subscribers. So it, take those with a grain of salt, at least to me, that's what I do. And I would say that even if I had 100,000, they might have cherry picked my unit and sent it to me. Like you gotta disclaim that stuff. So again, there's a use case for everything. The H2C is not for everyone. The Snapmaker you want is not for everyone because if you wanna do like these elaborate prints with like 24 different colors, you can't do that. Or even if you wanna do six colors, you can't do that. You want the Prusa XL, there's different things that are coming out with that, like the silicone printing. So <clears throat> I still think there's a use case for every single one of these 3D printers. Will I eventually get an H2C? We shall see. And the reason for that is this, the Vortec upgrade system is more what I'm looking at. We're looking at 835 euros for the H2D and H2D laser version. And then we're looking at 939 for the H2S. The H2D has been confirmed to be coming out in January. The H2S version says it's coming in Q1. Now, interestingly enough, it's actually cheaper to upgrade an H2S like buying an H2S and then upgrading it to the Vortec versus buying an H2D and upgrading it to the Vortec, it's actually cheaper for the H2S. So I'm kind of happy I bought the H2S over the H2D because eventually I'll just have all the same features. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna go this route. I think I'm gonna save up the like $1,000, $1,100, whatever it's going to cost for this upgrade. And I think maybe we can do a live stream when I hit 10K and we can upgrade my unit to this. Now I think I'll be at 10K before I actually see this thing. But you never know. I think it would be a cool thing to show people if it's actually worth doing and you can see all my frustrations when it happens and all of that jazz, right? Because it says it's not going to be easy and they recommend buying an H2C anyway. I'm sure you wish I had an H2C and an H2S, but I guess we'll see what we want to do with that. But they've already confirmed the upgrade system coming early next year. So again, guys, like just to kind of recap this, and this is just a raw person's thoughts that I buy most of my 3D printers, right? Of course, I've received some for free, but I buy most of my units. I don't think this is a must have. I think if you're a business owner, even then, like the ways to like price, like it's a much more expensive machine. We don't know over time, is it much more expensive to maintain as well? There's a lot of things to consider, but what are you guys thinking? If you have questions on the H2C that I did not answer, which I probably missed a lot of stuff, because there's just like a lot rambling through my brain, I'm gonna hop online, look for all the latest Form Next news, but we'll see you guys on Friday. If not, I'll probably put out more videos this week covering some of the Form Next stuff, because there's a lot I've already seen, and I wanna talk about it, and maybe we'll put out a video tomorrow morning. You never know. But outside of that, guys, again, remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on the video, and we'll see you later.